We're joined by Mr. Dent for the balance of the hour, best-selling author, Harry Dent. He's made some of the biggest predictions. I won't go over those in the last 20-plus years. HarryDentResearch.com, HarryDent.com. And uh, he, of course, has an MBA from Harvard Business School and worked at Bain and Company as a top strategist consultant for Fortune 100 companies. And, of course, he's been a CEO of major uh, companies as well. And he joins us. We appreciate him coming on. I want to get more of the demographic cliff because now everywhere, not just Donald Trump, but I was on CNN's website this morning and they had big economists saying that we're going to go over the edge of a cliff and QE's ending and uh, the British government saying that. Clearly, they think some police state will save them from what's coming, but the system knows it's going to be catastrophic. Why would they throw an Obamacare in that if I was going to design something to stall the economy, it'd be Obamacare? Uh, I mean, are they consciously trying to wreck the economy while they consolidate it? Are they insane? Because I used to think it was more of a conspiracy, and there's obviously corrupt stuff going on and organized crime and government. But more than that, I really think with their public bragging about ripping us off and acting delusional, I'm now prescribing more and more to the fact that, like Nero or Hitler or anybody else, that the political class is going insane right now. Uh, Mr. Dent, what do you think is happening? Because I want your take on Obamacare and, and top strategists that were involved in it admitting it's a giant screw job. Why would they then brag about screwing us? I mean, wh what's wrong with these people? Well, yeah, first of all, uh, we're in la-la land when it comes to entitlements. We, there is no way we can pay what's been promised in health care and, and in Social Security. Uh, pension plans are already realizing this. The, the typical person, because I study demographics, retires at age 63, not 65, and then they will live another 22 years. You cannot live with full health care benefits and Social Security. Governments cannot afford to fund that with the largest generation in history moving into these age ranges. So so right now we're just beginning to feel the sting and the cost of health care, and, and, and this is only going to make it more costly. The truth is, Alex, the biggest thing that needs to happen, something that will only be forced in a crisis, we need to be retiring at age 75, not 63 to 65. See, I've gone up since the how much our life expects in the 30s and 40s. We're not adjusting for this. And, and it's crazy to think we can support, people can work for 40 some years and then be supported for 20 some years by the government. It's just endless deficits. We're gonna see endless deficits even in good times. And of course, my demographics have been predicting difficult times. The only indicator that predicted the crash in Japan in the early 90s when everybody thought Japan was gonna take over the world. It is pointing down for China. It is pointing severely down for Germany. And the U.S., although we peaked back in 2007 with the spinning of our baby boom generation, we're going to see a bigger demographic drop, which comes after age 53. And that is this year peak for the baby boomers. So all the trends I have point down. And what do governments do? The worst thing they're doing, Alex, is they're pumping up the economy with steroids. I call it the markets on crack. They're just pumping money into the economy to keep it going and not allowing massive debt to rebalance and restructure. Well, let me There's ask you this question, because we've, we've right. talked about these basic market facts, and at the bottom of the hour, we'll go through some of your new graphs and some of your old graphs for folks. But how do you expect, as an analyst, a guy that has a really good brain and has made a lot of accurate predictions, where do you expect the dominoes? We're not holding you to this, but where would you, in a prime projection, if you had to say, if you had to plan your next 10 years now or, or tell folks what you thought was going to happen, where where do the dominoes start to fall first? Is it China? Is it in Russia? Is it the Middle East? And what do you expect to do with not just the welfare crowd, but so many yuppies in people think they're going to live large forever uh, uh, on propped up government derivatives and things? There's a lot of irrational exuberance out there. What happens when the music stops and we're playing musical chairs and passing this hand grenade around? How bad is it going to be? Well, you know, first of all, the biggest thing to understand beyond demographics and, and debt trends going against us is that we're in a bubble. We were in a bubble from late 94 to early 2000. People thought it would never end. It went up and up and up and up. And then when it crashed, it crashed rapidly. Bubbles crash twice as fast as they build. It tends to take five to six years to build a stock bubble, like late 24 to late 29, uh, 85 to ni uh, 89 in, in Japan. Uh, you know, we had late 94 to early 2000. Now we've got 
early 2009. I think this bubble's probably going to peak by March of next year, give or take. And, and the point is, it doesn't correct. There's some people saying, oh, we'll get a correction. Stocks are getting a little too frothy. Bubbles don't correct. They burst. When the NASDAQ bubble burst in two and a half months, the first crash took it down 40%. Half the entire decline came in the first two and a half months. So I tell people the dominoes are going to fall in the next few months. The, the market could be peaking here, but the signs are that, that we're going to get a correction here pretty soon and, and we'll go up a bit. Where will it crash hardest? Places like China? Yes, yes. And, and I think the, the dominoes, the, the danger periods for triggering this, last time it was the subprime crisis in the u.s real estate was falling as we predicted back in late 2005 the real estate had peaked the bubble was going to burst it started bursting then it triggered all these bad loans from very very bad lending that was the trigger but the whole world went down because of debt and demographics the triggers this time i think obviously politically uh putin and ukraine is the biggest thing uh you know the middle east has been in problems forever and will be for the next several years by our indicators but i think that's the biggest danger putin moving into Ukraine and continuing aggression on the political side. And on, on the um, demographic side, Germany looks worse than Japan did to me in 1989 when we called their crash ahead of time. Oh, yeah, the Germans aren't having kids. I mean, the Germans aren't having kids. They're done. They, they are done, and, and they're, they're going to keep, they have already disappointed all this year. We forecast that last year. Germany's going to disappoint, then it's going to really turn down in 2015. You did say that last year. Let's come back and look at that and talk more about Russia, because he just threw out uh, diplomats calling them spies. This is escalating quick. Regardless of which side of this you're on, this is serious. We'll be right back. I'm Alex Jones. Maybe you disagree with him, maybe you agree. 800 Two five nine ninety two thirty one eight hundred two five nine ninety two thirty one on this live Tuesday edition. Again, I'm your host, Alex Jones. Uh, this is out of the London Guardian. Putin says West is provoking Russia into a new Cold War as spies deported. Russian president denies fanning tensions. Says NATO expansion in Europe has been geopolitical game changer. They've now got fighter bombers and bombers flying around the Gulf of Mexico that are nuclear able. Vladimir Putin has suggested to German interviewer that the West is provoking Russia into a new Cold War. And he's also kicking out uh, different uh, NATO and other uh, ambassadors saying they're basically spies. Well, I mean, all these people are spies. Here's my deal. I don't say Putin's a great guy. My problem is Russia has not been expanding itself. They're lowering oil prices to try to bankrupt them. The West is. They are destabilizing Ukraine. I would expect Russia to come in and try to get control of its resources in eastern Ukraine. That said, though, the West is just going forward. Mr. Dent, what's your view on this as uh, from an atheistic view? I don't mean that obviously religiously, but as a political, you know, atheistic view. What is it? What do you expect Russia to do? And why do you call it the biggest trigger right now? Well, you know, it's just naturally in Putin's interest. The demographics of Russia are very poor in the years ahead. They've been growing very slowly. All of the communist countries, there was just an op-ed by David Brooks in the New York Times recently. that says, you look at the communist countries, like 90% of them are basically failed. Only 10% of them are working in capitalists. And a lot of those just because they have resources. Putin's got every incentive to expand by acquiring places like the Ukraine and Georgia back in the old Soviet Union. That, that's a strong goal of his. He makes no bones about it. He doesn't care if people does, don't like him. He's in control of his country. He's popular there. I think he's going to find every way to keep pushing. It's just a matter of, of when he finds the hole, you know, like a good runner in football and just breaks through the line. And, and so when he does that, that's going to be very destabilizing for the world. It, 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 it's the next World War III if we're going to have one. It's not going to be anything like World War II. The Middle East is more like civil wars within. This is something that, that, that could be a major conflict when it happens. We also, Alex, have a, a, a geopolitical cycle that was positive from 83 to 2000. Nothing went wrong in the world. From 2000, from 9-11, 2001, 9-11, everything's gone wrong. This cycle continues to point down. I've tracked it over 200 years into 2019. So, so we're also telling people the geopolitical arena in the world is not going to get better. It's only going to get worse in the Middle East, in Russia, Africa, you know, whatever. You know, maybe Ebola turns into something. I don't know. But 
But the stock market is going straight up as if we're in, not in a risky world. This is the riskiest time by all of our indicators since the 1930s, and the markets are acting like it's a cakewalk. Why? Because the Federal Reserve is guaranteeing the market. You know, they're just pushing money in, and the markets go down, they push more money in, and, and the markets think, hey, the Fed's got our back. So they're just going to go up until something goes wrong, and then you're going to see a bubble crash way worse than we saw in 2008 and 9. Let's talk about what the different political elites are doing. We're about to go to break. Long segments coming up. Clearly in the universities, clearly in leftist politics, Bill and Melinda Gates, you name it. They don't want Germany and England and the United States and uh, places like that uh, to have children. Uh, clearly there's a move uh, to tell you you shouldn't have you know more than one kid, but then they want to import third world populations from unskilled areas. Why would the political elites want to undermine the future of the West? Well, you know, I, I don't know, Alex, but it, it's something we've seen throughout history. When people get more fluent, when they move from rural to urban areas, they have less kids because it costs so much to raise a kid in urban areas. And now with the education bubble, which is the greatest bubble, I've ever seen, and, and, and has, something has to be done about it. Uh, you, know, you have to be rich just to get into college, or you have to get huge student loans. So, so this is a, a, a thing that goes with urbanization. It's happening around the world. People choose to have less kids, and governments and institutions support it. You have to have at least two kids a family to just sustain your country. And, and well, nobody doubts that demographic <laughs> fact. I agree. Then why are the eugenicists, the leftists, jumping on having less kids and saying it's bad to even have one or two, why Why do they have such an anti-civilization view? I want to see if you agree with that or disagree. Straight ahead, stay with us, folks. Your phone call that is because insider mega banks want a debtor society they can control. We'll get dense take and see if he disagrees here in a moment and start taking some of your phone calls. Before I go any further, though, here are some of the headlines. New York Times, Obama administration and health insurers have powerful, mutually beneficial partnership. New York Times. Val, companies will strenuously fight Republican efforts to dismantle Obamacare. And more taxes are now emerging. Meanwhile, 3,000 illegals joined Texas schools this week. 95% of families of illegals being released. New wave expected. I mean, this country is being imploded right now, ladies and gentlemen. Ex-Obama aide demolishes New York Times claim that Gruber role was limited. Former Obama aide says that he was the guru of the health plan. We'll cover that article coming up. And the video is on Infowars.com with the guest Steve Ratner. We're going to play that clip coming up. Once we get its top story, prisonplanet.com, infowars.com, harrydent.com is our guest website. Before I go any further, <coughs> give the gift this Christmas, I'll be politically incorrect, or this holiday of getting people healthy. We've come out with revolutionary, hardcore, missing link, hiding in plain view, true nation iodine that so many people are deficient in, that does so much more than just the regular iodines out there. Survival Shield X2 and Survival Shield Original. Survival Shield X2 is almost sold out. We have regular Survival Shield. Uh, DNA Force, Game Changer, Oxy Powder, you've heard the rave reviews, Super Male and Super Female Vitality, Lung Cleanse, and now the new, truly organic methylcobalamin, 80% of it's that, and the rest is the other organic, 20%. Secret 12, what we believe is the best B12 out there, just does amazing things. Unfortunately, we even got more delivered than we had previously produced. They had an overage at the laboratory, but it will be sold out within a couple days. Uh, so if you want to get Secret 12, it'll probably be till Christmas till we get more. Um, just can't wait to hear your reviews of it. It's been amazing for me and my family. Secret 12, what we believe is the most powerful, purest, highly absorbable form of B12 out there. 80% of it, of, of what's in there is what the injectable is. But you don't inject this. It's taken sublingually or lingually under the tongue or on the tongue. It's more if you put it under the tongue and let it really soak into those uh, glands, uh, the saliva glands there. But uh, very, very powerful. Ladies and gentlemen, InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. And you can also get a nightly news membership for all my films, the nightly news, the commercial-free podcast, special events, and more. 
20 years of material. It's been around 14 years now. PrisonPlanet.tv, InfoWarsNews.com, $5.95 a month, 20 people. We just turned it up yesterday.